now. I'd like to change the subject to something that hits very close to home in among many in Minnesota. Mr. President Gladys Mensing lives in Owatonna, Minnesota. She really loves being around people. That's a good thing when you have a family as big as Gladys does. She is a loving mother of eight children, 15 grandchildren, and 12 great-grandchildren. Gladys, as I said, is from Owatonna. That's in southern, southeastern Minnesota. Um, a few weeks ago, I received some old family videos that showed her playing with her grandkids. Gladys used to work as a waitress and an apartment manager, but what she really enjoys is a good game of bingo. In 2001, Gladys's doctor gave her a prescription for a medication known as MCP to treat a, digest a digestive tract condition. Gladys did what I would have done. She took her prescription to the pharmacy, got it filled, and started taking her medicine per her doctor's orders. Meanwhile, however, evidence was mounting linking MCP to neuro neurological disorders, and within a few years, Gladys began experiencing problems. She lost control of her face, tongue, and legs. It's really hard to understand Gladys when she speaks now. Her son says that people sometime, sometimes give Gladys strange looks when she goes out in public. Gladys used to be very strong and independent. Now her family has to help her bathe and, and walk. Gladys wanted to hold the drug manufacturer accountable for what happened to her. She believed that the warning label that came with her prescription was inadequate, that it did not sufficiently disclose the risks of taking MCP. So Gladys, a bingo-playing grandma from rural Minnesota, decided to stand up for her rights. Gladys took her fight all the way to the United States Supreme Court. But that's where things took a bizarre turn. In Minnesota, as in many other states, the law requires drug manufacturers to warn patients of the known, the known dangers associated with their products. Manufacturers that don't follow the law are held accountable to the patients who are harmed as a result, people like, like Gladys. But the Supreme Court, in a five to four decision, said that those laws don't apply to generic drugs, like the medicine Gladys was taking. Rather, the court said that federal regulations actually prohibit generic drug manufacturers from updating their labels, prohibit generic drug manufacturers from updating their labels. And it said that the federal regulations prohibiting label changes trump Minnesota's patient protection laws, which require full disclosure of potential risks. So under that ruling, even if a generic drug company wanted to provide better warnings of risks to consumers, it can't. Now, generic drugs are, for all intents and purposes, the same as brand name drugs. They have the same active ingredients, they're used for the same purposes, and yes, in most cases, they should have the same labels. That's why current FDA regulations require generic drug labels to match brand name drug labels. But it doesn't make sense to prohibit generic drug makers from updating their labels to accurately reflect new side effects or risks that have come to light. Yet that is the current state of law. So the court dismissed Gladys's case just because she was taking a generic drug. Let me say that again. Because Gladys was taking the generic version of her medicine, she was unable to vindicate her rights under Minnesota law. If Gladys had suffered the same injuries from the brand name version of the same pill containing the same warning, she would have had her day in court. Since the Supreme Court dismissed Gladys's case last June, lower courts have dismissed dozens of similar cases because, as a recent article in the New York Times aptly said, 
Quote, what once seemed like a trivial detail, whether to take a generic or a brand name drug, has become the deciding factor in whether a patient can seek legal recourse from a drug company, unquote. That doesn't make any sense. Justice Thomas, who wrote the Supreme Court's decision in Gladys's case, admitted as much. He wrote this, quote, we recognize that from the perspective of Mensing, this decision makes little sense, unquote. I agree with him on this point. And I'd like to think he'd agree with me on this. Prescription drugs should be safe and their labels should be adequate. So, Senator, Senators Leahy, Bingaman, Brown, Whitehouse, Coons, Blumenthal, and I are introducing a bill that would guarantee just that. Our bill, the Patient Safety and Generic Labeling Improvement Act, would allow generic drug makers to update their warnings, allow them <laughs> to update their warnings to accurately reflect the known risks associated with their drugs. That's, that's it. It wouldn't, even, it wouldn't require them to do so. It just lets them do what other drug manufacturers already are allowed to do. Our bill says that millions of Americans who are taking generic drugs are entitled to the same protections as people who take brand name drugs. And it says that people like Gladys Mensing are entitled to their day in court when manufacturers fail to disclose risks. I thank Senator Leahy for his leadership on this issue and urge my colleagues to join with us in supporting this common sense fix.